Hey everybody, Zyle here, back with another guide for Mind Over Magic. Um, in this guide, we're going to be talking about building, but how all the building stuff works. I've got one of my more advanced playthroughs uh, loaded up because it has a bunch of uh, examples that I can show, as well as uh, I have unlocked all the prime building type stuff so that, you know, I can show you like the stuff in research. So let's get into it. Uh, we basically will go over the build menu and we're in construction. This is where you do all your building. Okay. And when you first start the game, you're going to have walls, floors, roof, spiral, stairs, normal stairs, doors, and hallway unlocked. All these rests get unlocked through research. So you have these basic seven things. Okay. So we'll start with the, the most basic thing, which is wall. Wall is uh, exactly how it sounds. It is a wall. All right. And so you can simply do this. And you know, you'll be building a stone wall this high. Something to know about walls is you can see here at this top one, we have a wall. Okay. So if we were to go and take a floor, and floors are, of course, for building on the horizontal. But if we take a floor and we do like this, okay. And if they were to build this, because this piece here is a wall, it won't matter that there's a floor here. They won't be able to walk over that section. So what we would have to do is cap it off and change that into a floor piece. And then if once that gets changed out, then they will be able to walk through here. Uh, however, if we wanted to make a room, not just extend this, and we were trying to build another room, we would do a wall and we would simply build it up and there would be a wall here, which they can't walk through. The tool for allowing access will either be a door or a hallway a hallway you just put in like that it's four high and it will now make a cut and they will be able to walk through and this will be treated as two sections two rooms another thing we can do of course is to simply add a door a door will function the same but it costs materials once this is done we would have a door here uh, the only real reason to have a door is if the room says must have a door or if we wanted to limit access through this passageway. Otherwise, we can just use the uh, ha the hallway cut uh, for free, and they will be able to walk through. So, for example, we have a door here, and the reason we have a door is because we wanted to limit access. So we can go into the access menu in the door and say who is allowed to go into this room, and you could have a variety of reasons why you would want to limit uh, who could have access into a room. One example is in this setup, and I use doors primarily for this, is to not allow mages to go into the uh, void trim farms. Void trims will drain mages mana. So what I will allow in here is quilted because they are not affected by having their mana drain. My spirit ghost, because they don't have mana and aren't affected by mana drain. And then I have one staff member who is allowed to go in here because they have a, a, a property, a medallion, that makes them immune to void drain. So if they go in, it won't affect them. So that's a primary use of the door. Next in the build menu, we have roofs. Roofs are a little bit janky, but the primary reason we want roof is to prevent rain. If you have a roof and it rains, the rain will not fall through. In all other conditions, for example here, we don't have a roof over this section. So if it rains, the rain will actually fall on here freely, but it will pool up on the floor and leak through. So there will be some water that will go down into this next section. Um, and then anything that is hit by water is going to get damaged, as well as your mages, if they get hit by the water, they will get wet. Um, so we can build roofs to prevent that. Further thing for roofs, though, is they're very janky. When we build them, how we would do, if I wanted to build a roof over here, and you can see I already have a roof cap here, and it's saying you can't build here. But what you can do is simply build beside it. So you can see you can add that roof on, and you don't have to close it to something. You can build jank like that, and that will prevent a roof area over top of this. Once we click to start the roof and where we want to end the roof, we simply can then, before we hit confirm, you can grab these sliders and you can adjust them to make kind of whatever design you want. So we can see that we can make this a very tall peak. And if we want to adjust this one, we can move it around, All right, We can make it higher or lower, depending on what our needs are. And so that can allow us to get like a, a very nice structure like this. Or if we wanted to make a really low roof, we can bring it down like this and slightly adjust it just to get the shape we want. 
And then once we're satisfied with the shape that we like, we simply hit confirm and the mages will build it out. Next thing to talk about will be this various staircases that you start with. You start with two types of staircases. Spiral stairs are the ones that most people will use. And as you can see, I have a st spiral staircase running through this whole section. So it's a vertical. Now, where the stairs get placed, it's always very specific um, to the flooring. As you can see, it will always be centered. We can't move it forward. We can't move it backwards. And when we start the stairs, a brand new one, the opening will always be in the same place, which is right in this zone where they're gonna walk in and out of. So we have to make sure that's not obstructed, but they do a good job of that. The basic footprint won't let you build it where it would be blocked. See here, the stairs would be blocked by the other stairs, but if I move it over one, it will allow me to actually build the stairs there because they will have access. And then we can simply run it up as high as we want to. And anywhere where it cuts off a floor, it's going to build um, this kind of opening. And you can see though, depending on what level it ends at, is gonna be where the openings are. So you have to be a little bit careful of understanding, depending on where the level fits in, um, the opening will actually change. On this one, we can see the opening is here. On the ground floor, we can see the opening is here, right? So it went even. The reason it went even, same access side, is because it's four high. Whenever we do a common building practice, of going up four on a wall and adding a floor on the fifth tile, then the stairs that connect will always have the opening on the same side. But here we can see this one because it was not exactly that measurement. We skipped a few floors, came out at, a, at an odd level. Now the opening is actually here. So that changes. It can be it can be all four directions depending on where you end it. And we go up a bit more, we can see the openings at the back side now. So you can get your openings going in all four directions depending on what level you stop at based on where you began from. The other type of stairs you start with are these uh, uh, sort of like vertical stairs. And we can see we have one here. So when we build these, we're simply just deciding where we want it to go, giving them make sure they have room, of course, to... Um, to, to get through. And here we have another one, same thing, right? You can see I've built it almost right up to the wall, but not in the wall, okay? So it's footed there, they will have access. And then we simply, when we're building stairs, you can rotate them either way, we simply build it, tell them how far we want it, and that's gonna be our stairs. And of course, this is saying not connected to a wall or a floor, right? It's invalid. So you need to have a uh, flooring in order for it to access to there must be a floor connected to this and it must sit on a floor now why those stairs are good is they allow a few purposes one we can build along the back wall it gives a lot more room as opposed to a spiral stairs which sits in the middle of the room and you see this gives us way much more room to work with when we're using those back wall stairs and we can run them in conjunction so we started this one here and we could have even started this one over we start it here and then their axis came out they have access out there and then we could just simply put another one at the footing of it and go up again. And so that allows us to run stairs in parallel. However, um, you do need to be careful. If you want to build multiple stairs, where you bring this one up, this one is done correctly, but then this one is gonna be have to be pushed over, right? You can't quite get it uh, set up right. However, we could change this and move it over one and it would run up to here and do that so on. So this one is slightly off, but but we could have built it uh, a bit better to have them running up and you can just build vertical stairs on the back walls like that. That's actually a better way to do it than running spiral stairs, but to each their own, it's a matter of preference and fitting the design in the way that you like it. So those are the basics that we start with. We start with walls, floors, roofs, spiral stairs, regular stairs, doors, and hallways. And I've explained all those. Now, once you get into the research and we can see in the research tree, if we go in here, uh, one of the very first things we can get into will be supports, all right? And the first thing we can unlock is what we, we would call an arch support small. An arch support small allows us to do some extra building, right? So for example, if I were to build a floor here, you'll see when I get to here, it's not supported and it's giving me that yellow saying this, this is uh, not supported. Then if I were to say, well, I'll take the arch support small, I'll stick it right on the wall there to the floor, okay? Now what's gonna happen is when this piece gets built, it is going to allow this one to unlock and I'll, I'll demonstrate that. So now we can see that they've built in this uh, small arch support 
And now when we go and check with our flooring, you can see this piece became valid. Okay, so it's extended it by one, but that's all it's going to do. It's just going to allow you to put that in and get one more space of flooring over. And so then finish off this room and we've got one more over and maybe that's the case. You might be building and you just need, you just want to get that extra space. And that's just literally giving us support of a plus one. And then of course we could build our wall there and we can make that room. If this thing was not here, this would all be invalid. So that's how the arch supports work. The next thing that we unlock fairly early after a little support is support all the way down. And we're going to get the outdoor support column and the support column. These are wonderful tools. It really allows you to start expanding before you have foundations. So we have a couple examples here of that. Here you can see we are on the grass. There is no foundation built here, but somehow we have managed to build our school up further. And that's because we're using these ground supports and those in the menu is right here outdoor support column and it allows us to build columns on grass and then we can build on top of those columns okay so before you get foundations you can start to expand your school because you have access to these columns so you can see that i put two of them in here early on so i could start to expand my base and i didn't want to build rooms right now down here and of course later on if i add foundations i could remove these and uh, build walls and then start to have these to be rooms as well if I needed. The next one that we're going to look at is the other column, which is the support column. The support column is for making big rooms without walls in them. So you can see here, this is all one very large room. And because it's a common room, it needs a lot of stuff. It needs a, a lot of beds. It needs some enchantophones. It needs dining tables. It needs a lot. So um, we never, in a normal, what's allowed structurally, we could never build all that in one room. So we're using these uh, support columns in order to have the room give support to the uh, the area above uh, and allow us to have a much larger room. So they do take a little bit of space, but that is what's allowing us to build a huge room down here and then to build more on top of it because these are acting as a stone wall providing support from up to the upper levels. And it's a very useful tool for advanced building. Next thing we'll look at is the foundations. Foundations eventually get unlocked and they do cost some, some scrolls, a significant amount of 24 arcane scrolls and six adept scrolls. And when you unlock this one, you're going to get foundations and also ladders, two extremely useful tools for later in the game. So let's have a look at how that works. So the initial foundation we start with in every game is, a, is this size. This is what I started with from here to here. Uh, eventually I'm gonna want to expand out as we can see, I've been doing over here. Um, so what I've done is I've gone and built my own foundations and those foundations then allow me to build staircases and to build walls and to continue to expand my, my uh, school. So I could have built foundations all across here as well, like I said earlier, and could have had this to be a room. And eventually I will probably do that. Foundations are the way, the primary means to ex expand your base outwards. Also keep in mind that you do not need to connect your entire school. Foundations and supports allow you to build freestanding structures that are not connected to your main school. For example, if I wanted to, I could put a support here. And once that's built, I could have another support, say here, right? And now we have the uh, two supports put in place and we could simply go and build our floor on there. And see, that's all perfectly valid. And so if we, got access to that this would be now a place we could build upon uh, one of the ways of course we could get access was by building stairs now this isn't going to jank fit in very well due to jank but more or less if i was going to try and get access here i would simply take my stairs connect it there and run them down to a ground level uh and if as long as it was valid it would give it now this won't be valid because it would need a foundation but certainly there are many ways to build freestanding structures without having foundations set. But the easiest way though, of course, is to not do it this way. Um, the easiest way, and then you don't have to jank in your stairs, is simply to add foundations. So let's say I wanted to, and this will be blocked out, but here you can see there's nothing blocking. All I need to do is clear the trees out and I could build a foundation here. Um, and that would allow me, if I had a clear open area, that would allow multiple foundations like here 
right? Now I've got, I could have three foundations here. This is going to allow me to then go and build walls. Now it won't let you until it'll say invalid until your foundations are built, of course, right? You can see it's not, it's not being agreeable because it's saying it's on ground, but eventually once these foundations are put in place, I would be able to build the walls here. I would be able to build a floor across the top and I would be able to go and add staircases in to the foundation as well. Again, it's saying invalid because I have to build the foundations, but that's a general pr purpose. So you don't have to build off your main school. You can build structures anywhere you want. Also, when you unlock foundations, you also unlock ladders. Ladders are really, really useful and excellent saving space. And you can, you can literally free up so much space later on by switching out your spiral staircases to ladders. Um, so ladders, they're quite easy to work with. Um, you can see I have one set up here and they're right on the back wall and they run through the floors, yeah, right? So this is, this ladder is allowing access to all these rooms. So basically they could come in this door and then utilizing that ladder allows them to get up and down. One of the things to note though, ladders give minus two luxury. So if you're using them through in rooms that need, you need a lot of luxury, you're going to have to count for it. Every single piece is going to give a minus two luxury uh, to that, that room. Whereas normal stairs and spiral stairs do not give any hit to luxury. So keep that in mind if you're gonna use ladders, but they're incredibly useful for rooms where luxury is not a consideration, and especially if you wanna free up a lot of floor space uh, in that area. A last note about uh, when you're building large rooms and using staircases, as you can see what I've done here, this had to be a very large room because of the conditions I'm trying to reach. I'm trying to make this into a hospital and it requires at least five beds and a whole bunch of different decorations and a whole bunch of different things in order to accommodate it. Plus, it had to be lofted as a condition. So what that resulted in is the amount of, of floor, floor print I wanted and how big I'm going to make it also told me that it had to be extremely tall because lofted, the walls must be one higher than the floor space. So this ended up being very large. If you don't do what I did here, which is to add a staircase and then a floor within the room who will basically have a lot of wasted space. But because I've just had a, such a large room and I could build a staircase, I'm able to also then build a floor off of it and give myself a second level within a singular room. It's a powerful tool and you should be aware that you can pull off tricks like this and you could even probably then have expanded it by putting another stairs in here to another floor. Or if you didn't care about luxury, you could have put another floor up here and had ladders running through it. So you could have had this could have been three floors, just don't connect them all the way over and then simply run a ladder up the wall and you could have had uh, a triple leveled room. So it's uh, very useful for rooms that have to be big. Uh, a good example would also be this uh, common room, which had to have a lot of stuff in it and be very large. This common room could have been, especially if the common room condition was lofted, it could have been built similar like this and had multiple levels up and then had like beds on one level and the enchantophone on another level and dining tables on another level. So you can get very creative with how you uh, build your rooms and designate how things are going to fit together. And finally, we all want to talk about a skewed property. Um, skewed is where one wall must be three taller than the other. So if we look at the room here, this is considered skewed and it's simply because I have this wall is at least three taller than the other. Generally, when we build a skewed room, we will want to build the walls the way so one is hot, taller than the other, and then we can just run a roof on it and it gives it the enclosed property and it becomes skewed. But there are tricks that you can do as well where you can set this up by putting a wall in that is meeting the condition and then the next wall over is going to be taller. So I'll just try and uh, give you an example here of what that would look like. So the other way that we could do skewed, and it's a little bit of a trickery, um, and I'll just kind of rough it out for you. So what we would need to do is, let's say we wanted this room over here to end up being skewed, okay? Um, right now, this wall is very tall, but it, we want to be able to get a floor across it up here, not to have a roof to get the skewed property like in the previous example. So we would have to do a wall. It has to be at least too high to count as a wall, okay? One piece will not be enough. So you have two walls, and then you simply have to add in a floor 
to it. It needs that floor. And then beside it, we would then go and build a proper wall to the level that we want it. Let's say we were thinking of running a floor across somewhere. Um, so now we've got this setup where we've got a wall beside a wall. Uh, we would then go and put our free hallway cut and we do it up here. That's going to create that opening for us. Uh, and then we need to add a stair so they'd have access. So since this is a floor, it would be valid. And we would go like that. Finish this off. We need to get one more piece of wall here to satisfy it against the arch. And then we simply have to go and take our floor, connect it here, run it across. And there you go. This room, once completely built, will be considered skewed. Because this wall here is one, two, three, four. It's three, minimum three, higher than this wall is. And yet, the way that we've built this, we've actually got a flat surface across it as opposed to how we did it here where we used a roof. So we'll have a skewed room here, and depending on how we wire it in and build out the rest of our base, uh, we actually can use this space because it's not considered a roof. Uh, we could do th all sorts of stuff to get access to this area up here, such as in this room, we merely go and say, well, we know we've got a hallway cut there. We could build the floor across here. We could try and wire a stairs in. Uh, we could try and wire in a spiral stairs up to here. We could take our flooring and go right straight from the bottom part there. And then what would happen is the mages could uh, walk up these stairs, run across this, they're going to be in through this door and then they're into this room area. But also this spiral stairs would allow them to get underneath if we wanted to. So there's a lot of real clever tricks you can do with the building in order to satisfy the skewed condition without having to simply end things with a roof. So that's my basic guide to uh, working with the construction menu and, and various tips and tricks about how to build things and the basics of it all. And I hope that uh, it was it was something that uh, provides some insight to people watching the video and that you found it useful. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing. I post lots of Mind Over Magic videos, lots of Let's Plays, among other uh, gaming-based building colony type games. Uh, as well as please leave a comment if you uh, have questions uh, further about the things that I talked about in this video or you just have any other useful tips that maybe that I didn't talk about and should be included. That being said, have a great day. We'll see you in the next one.